Welcome to uh, Code of Guitar. I'm uh, Sean and we're doing another three string cigar box guitar lesson here. So uh, we've done a few of these recently uh, looking at uh, major and minor chord sequences uh, and also uh, this is a minor scale sequence lesson uh, which accompanies our major scale sequence lesson. So if you want to check all of those out um, in, in series there should be quite a lot of uh, useful stuff there for you to get your fingers around. So uh, before we carry on, let's just check we're in tune. Um, this is, as always, basically standard um, G, D, and G. Sort of fairly standard cigar box guitar tune in there. So um, that's giving us a, a G power chord. Um, so G, D, G. So um, we're, we're going to be um, sort of stemming from that. Um, it's by far the easiest way to play when we're in this tuning. So um, we're using a minor scale there and um, uh, I wasn't actually playing any melody notes on, on the top string, string one, but I'm, I'm just going to start with that just to demonstrate the, um, the, the scale because it's probably easiest to, to see how um, the notes fit together. If we start with a G, which is what we call the root note, the, the sort of bass note of the, the whole key, the whole scale, uh, that's, that's an open string. So we're going straight from there to fret 2 and then we're going to fret 3 and then we're going to fret 5 uh, and then we're going to fret 7 and we're going to fret 8 and then we're going to fret 10 and then we're going to fret 12. Okay, so let's just do that one more time. Uh, now it, it's not necessary that you know this but um, if you're interested the uh, the notes that you're actually playing G, A fret 2, B flat fret 3, it was uh, fret 4 for a normal B when we did the major scale one, fret 5 is C, fret 7 is D, fret 8 is E flat uh, it was fret 9 for normal E when we did the major scale on. And then fret 10 is F, and then fret 12 is G again. So uh, basically I'm, I'm stopping uh, nearly all of the time when, uh, when I get to fret 12, because those three notes are um, the same as the open strings, but what we call one octave higher. So whatever we're tuned to, G is the same, D, G at fret 12. Okay, So um, if we can play that scale on string 1 then we can do it on uh, string 3, the low G as well. So G, fret 2, fret 3, fret 5, fret 7, fret 8, fret 10, fret 12. Okay, And uh, we, can, we can play it on the middle string. So actually quite a lot of the melody that I was playing, um, the sort of tune of it, was, was actually on the, the middle string, the middle D string here. So um, just to find the G to start with, we're going to go for fret 5. So it's, it's always um, helpful when you're trying to understand this if, if we start from like the root note, so the G in this case. So fret 5, up to fret 7, uh, so that would be an A. Uh, fret 8, that would be a B flat fret 10 C and then fret 12 D which is up to the open uh, the, the octave of the open string okay 
uh, I, I could carry on if I wanted, which would be fret 13, fret 15, fret 17 up to the high G. I'm just about run out of frets on this particular instrument. Uh, but I'm probably more likely to actually go lower. In instead of carrying on past fret 12, uh, I've, I've got a bunch of frets here which I haven't played, so I'm going to use those. So uh, G is fret 5, and F is fret 3, and then E flat is fret 1, D is the open string. So depending on um, how your instrument set up, I've, I've covered this in other lessons, but um, it's, it's worthwhile mentioning. Um, like this is a relatively high action because uh, I use it for playing slide on as well. So fret one in this instance, that does feel quite tight to push down. Um, so if, you, if you're fully set up for slide playing, you might find some of these fretted notes sort of difficult, difficult to play. Um, but D, E flat, F, G. G, A, B flat, C, D, and so on. Um, now that is, uh, th there's actually, there's one type of major scale, um, but there are different types of minor scales. So uh, this, this particular one's actually called a natural minor. It's quite sort of evenly balanced. Um, There's nothing in it that sort of jumps out at you. Um, it sort of, sort of flows quite nicely. Uh, what we can do is we can change one note in it and um, we can make it into a different type of minor scale. Uh, we're actually going to change the seventh note. Uh, I'll, I'll do this on the top string to start with. So uh, not normally or previously we were using fret 10, which is an F. I'm going to raise that. And so fret 11. That now is uh, what we call an F sharp. Um, so uh, if I play the scale, frets 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 11, 12. Now straight away, that, that's got a really kind of strong pull to it. So depending on how you use it, it could you know, sound sort of quite exotic, quite like Middle Eastern, um, or uh, as with the example at the beginning, it can sound quite classical as well. Um, so um, just changing that one note, that becomes a harmonic minor scale. Um, and I was, I was using that quite a lot in this example, which we'll look at in, in a moment. Um, so I can obviously do that on the bottom string as well. Uh, but uh, what I used quite a lot was was uh, played that um, F sharp note on uh, the middle string. So there's a G, and then fret four is an F sharp, combined with that note there, that fret eight note, that B flat. It sounds very minor, um, yeah, very sort of classical sounding. So uh, I'm just trying to cover um, kind of useful theory. We don't want to get too heavily sort of bogged down in all this because I'm, I'm sure you just want to be able to play play stuff and make it sound interesting. Um, but uh, so, sometimes it can be useful to know and if, if, if you understand in a certain way, um, it, it can actually make it easy to learn things as well. Um, so uh, if you're interested, um, I said B flat and E flat and then F sharp. Um, so they're, they're effectively what, what you'd class as um, black keys on the piano. Um, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, they're all like the white keys on the piano. Um, and, and so um, if you get a flat note, then what you've done is you've taken a normal note and you've, you've squashed it down, you've lowered it, you've flattened it. So for example, normal uh, B is fret four. If we flatten it, make it sound one, step lower, then that's a B flat. So we're using the um, always a capital um, to either um, label the chord or the individual note. So capital B, but with uh, what looks like a lowercase italic B letter, um, that's actually a flat symbol in music. So it'd be B with a little italic B and that'd be B flat. Uh, or in this case, E fret nine, E flat fret eight, so E, little italic, um, B symbol for flat. Uh, the opposite sharp being that you raise the note by one fret. So if you take an F and you raise it, 
um, up to fret 11 from fret 10, uh, we use like a little hash symbol. Um, so capital F with a hash, that's an F sharp. So it's just one step higher, one fret higher. Uh, and that's just simply how they work. Um, so they're, they're the two um, sort of main useful type of minor scales. Um, there, there are also, uh, I mean, we've covered pentatonic scales in um, an earlier uh, lesson, which is just looking at sort of basic fretting and a uh, little bit on hammer-ons and pull-offs and things to, to get your, your fretting hand working. But uh, they've got five notes in. They sound great, really good, excellent for blues, classic rock, stuff like that. Um, but uh, if you add an extra couple of notes in, because uh, we've got seven notes in these scales, and um, they, they can be uh, more versatile. Uh, not good for everything. Like, you know, I wouldn't play a blues particularly with either of these scales using every single note, but um, it's good to be versatile. You know, it's good to be able to play a range of stuff. Um, so let's have a crack at the first couple of bits uh, of what I played in the, uh, the, the demo. Now, straight away, what we want to try and do, uh, we've, we've not looked at this before in these lesson series, we're going to alternate with our thumb pick. So I'm going to start on the middle string and I'm going to alternate back to the low G. So I'm just going D, G, D, G. Okay, so fine. Not a huge amount going on there, but it's, it's, it's alright. It's, it's a good um, bass. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to add this high G in uh, in between every single thumb bass note. So uh, straight away that gives it a real sort of classical sound, real sort of strong classical sound. It's the sort of thing, what once you get used to doing it, uh, you can speed it up and it actually sounds a lot more uh, impressive, a lot more difficult than, than it actually is to play. get a sort of fast bubbly sound uh, and so all we were doing was uh, we were playing fret 4, fret 5, this is on the middle string, 4 and then 8 and so the melody's coming out with a low G and a high G sort of droning either side of it. Uh, I'm just bridging with my uh, fretting hand so that I'm not too flat because uh, I'm playing the melody on the middle string I've got to be able to bridge around so I'm not, not interfering with that one uh, it's got to be able to ring out so you just need to curl, curl your finger around nicely so uh, there's there's loads more description of that um, in the uh, I think it was the um, major chord lesson uh, but if you check out the series um, you'll, you'll, you'll get through to that uh, so Bridging round and it's strings two, three, two, three with the pick two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three. Two, three. So I would um, loop round that a few times. Uh, that's that's a really good exercise. Um, you, you'll get a lot of alternating thumb uh, movement in like blues and roots music as well, so it's, it's a re really good one to get into that. Uh, and then, you know, what, once, once you've got a bit of a flow to it, you can just speed it up a bit. So the, the very simple melody, just three notes, but it kind of comes through a bit more when we speed it up slightly. Um, so what, one, one of the reasons why I'm alternating with my pick is because um, it's plastic and you get a, you get a different tone um, from just using your fingers. Uh, I haven't got particularly long nails because I do a bit of bass playing as well. So um, you'll, you'll, you'll often get a different sound with your thumb pick compared to what's going on here. So you can pick out the melody nicely. The sort of melody note's quite sharp. Um, and then all, all I was doing for the rest of it was I was just really um, messing around with um, alternating notes. out that bit, the 4, 
to 8, so that was just 12, 10, 7, 8, and sorry, for, for 8. And what, what I'm doing there is I'm just moving twice as quickly. So, um, stay in there for two notes, stay in there for two notes, pl plucking it twice. Um, once, 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 twice. Okay. And then um, the next part, we literally just, just switched onto the bass string and um, uh, using the same notes from the same scale, but it almost sounds a little bit more like a chord change now because it's the, the lower note. So I uh, we went from um, fret eight, 10, three, five, seven, I think that was. Uh, and, and again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna alternate with my thumb, but I'm, I'm gonna um, still, uh, I'm gonna start on uh, low G, but I'm, I'm still gonna play two, two strings and just, just use a finger on the high G. I'm still, still bridging around there. Um, So that was um, playing twice on fret 8, twice on fret 7, once on 3, 5, 7, um, and then I can just do that again. But this time I might go 3, 2, 1, sort of fit, look, go down to a low G to finish off. Um, now that is, um, like I said, flipping over what you pick, uh, you, your thumb pick's doing. So your thumb pick's going two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three. Whereas here it's three, two, three, two, three, two. So what what you can do is um, you can just sort of tail off uh, tempo-wise, just slow down slightly at the end of each section, just so you don't like trip yourself over trying to like flip it round. Um, so say if it went like this. down a bit and then sort myself out and it kind of sounds you know like part of the music it doesn't sound out of place at all but and then slow down sort myself out start again and so on okay um in the scale major scale lesson uh, also looked at what you call double stops which is playing two notes together um, so a little bit of that at the end of uh, that that demo at the beginning as well so um, when when you play two notes together you, you're implying a chord so uh, for example fret five fret three top two strings again get a good bridge going on here fingers around nicely. Um, so that's like a G minor and uh, uh, so two, two frets apart is a minor, one fret apart is like a major. So uh, what I'll do to start with is I'll just go through um, the, uh, th these are, are like chords, so har harmony is like chords, so, so these, these little double stops that work in the natural minor, the more sort of smooth one. Um, so there's a G, it's like an F, which is frets 3 and 2, 5 and 3 for the G, 7 and 5, it's like the A, A minor, and then that's like the B, B flat, so that's 8 and 7, and then there's like a C minor, which is 10 and 8, and then 12 and 10, it's like a D minor. Flat. So that's 13 and 12, and then it's getting quite high here. I didn't actually use this, but we can we can carry on. So that's the same. There's a low F. There's a high F on 15 and 
14 and then right up to 17 and 15. There's a low G. F, E flat, D minor, C minor, B flat, A minor, G minor. There's the open, so instead of playing fret 12, I've got the open string. So uh, for the harmonic minor, uh, we can get a, quite an interesting sound. Instead of playing um, frets 3 and 2, we're, we're going to play frets 2 and 4. So we're literally dropping that G minor down. And that's kind of like a sort of F sharp minor shape. And then same as before, A minor, B flat. C minor, so all that's the same, and then it changes again. Instead of having a D minor, I'll have a D major, which is 12 and 11. So there's like an E flat. There's like a sort of F sharp minor type thing. There's a G minor, A minor, B flat, C minor, D. And that's just the same as down there, but an octave higher. I'm not going to use this very much at all, but just just to show you how you can finish it off. Um, so yeah, just we're just using that sort of sound, and um, I was uh, using the harmonic minor quite a bit, and again, just um, alternating with your thumb. Very similar to before, but we're actually just um, instead of leaving the G drone in, we're, we're adding an extra note in. Um, so that was um, shape on frets four and two, five and three, eight and seven. And then uh, the next bit, um, I just flipped it around a bit. <clears throat> um, you can actually play what you call a power chord. So instead of always having um, the, the, the higher note sort of further up towards the, um, the body on the middle string um, and the lower note on, on the top string, you can flip it around like that. Uh, so that's a G minor and that is actually a, a power chord. That's like a G, G power chord, that one. Um, so uh, it, it doesn't, it's like, it's like the open notes, it doesn't have um, the note that makes it sound major or minor. Uh, so use that and also, also use that one, which is a bit like a sort of B flat power chord. So that's fret 8 and 10, 5 and 7. And then just, just drop down. Um, so from fret 8 to fret 7. Same sort of trick, um, but this time starting on the middle string with the alternating thumb again. Do it again. This time, same shape, but three frets lower. Fret four, seven, five. So all of that would sound like this. And again, I'm going to slow down the end of the first double stop section to get into this sort of power chord section because I'm, I'm alternate, I'm switching around where my bass is going. Uh, so if, if I just maintain a sort of rock solid tempo, uh, I'm, I could easily sort of trip over it. So uh, starting on string three with the alternating bass. And then 
the final bit was just using double stops to sort of run down the scale. So you get quite an interesting sound if you go from high E flat frets 12 and 13 to D frets 11 and 12, 12 and 11, 10 and 8 for C minor, 7, 8 and 7 for B flat, 7 and 5 for A minor and then like a sort of F sharp minor back to G minor. So that's just, uh, I mean, you can, you know, do what you want with it. It's just like the sort of a little concluding thing. You can just pluck, pluck the notes or you can keep your picking pattern going. So strings two, three, two, three, two, three, two, the bass two, three, finish on power chord. Okay. Um, right. Obviously, uh, take your time with that. Um, there's, there's, there's quite a lot in there. There's, there's only what sort of like four or five different little um, sections, but um, uh, each of them are quite useful little sort of um, technique exercises just to get you, in particular, I think your your uh, right hand going. Um, but it, even though it doesn't really sound much at all like blues, it'll it'll really um, help help bring on your playing. I think because um, it's it's all about trying to be as consistent as possible uh, with your picking. It's it's very difficult to um, sort of maintain a completely constant pattern, you know, for an entire three or four minute song length. <clears throat> so um, stuff like this is is quite good for just sort of tra training your um, thumb to move independently and and sort of regularly, and then your fingers to work around it, that type of thing. Um, and uh, also I'm going to do another video which is um, looking at how you can just mix up um, the notes from major and minor scales and um, you can uh, use it very effectively uh, in, in something that's more sort of bluesy or rootsy. Um, and uh, right at, also right at the end of the minor chord lesson, uh, I just give a quick sort of demo of how you can do that, actually mixing up major and minor chords um, or chords that are found in major and minor keys, just sort of like shoehorn them all together. And um, you can get quite interesting uh, sort of uh, much more bluesy, rootsy sounds. Um, so uh, Phil, please check all of that out and um, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll see you here again soon on Coda Guitar.